for the last 10 years, pretty much everything I need to learn now is through Google, YouTube, and Wikipedia. I've never needed to go to a lecture, a presentation, and I feel a little bit odd being in this situation now, given how I think learning happens these days, at least for, from my point of view. And most of everything I learn when I reflect on it happened in chunks of 4 minutes and 12 seconds. 4 minutes and 12 seconds is the average video length of a YouTube video. And I do notice that music videos seem to operate around that mark. And my attention span does seem to be held in that genre, music video. When I listen to lectures, in fact I've got a link to a lecture called An Anthropological Introduction to YouTube by uh, Michael Vesh from um, Kansas. It's a 60 minute long video to the Library of Congress. He won the Professor of the Year in 2009. And it does give us an anthropological view of the phenomenon of YouTube. But it's 60 minutes long. But when I listened to it again last night to check if I was, would share it with you, uh, the link to it that is, I notice again all the points he's making come in four minute chunks roundabout. So in fact, it's a video 60 minutes long made up of however many 4 minute 12 second videos can fit in that time span. On the other hand, when I listen to an Echo 360 of your averaged educationally untrained, professionally trained lecture, that chunking of points is not so clear. Often one point can ramble on for 15 minutes or more. So I'm going on the premise that all learning happens today at least, in 4 minutes and 12 seconds. If it can't be said in that time period, it's not worth saying. 4 minutes and 12 seconds, that's your limit as a teacher. Sure, you can go on for multiples of 4 minutes and 12 seconds, but just close every point in that time frame. Uh, and that I learn everything through Google, YouTube and Wikipedia. Now, this is the part that I say that I think is, you we expect you think is <coughs> out of fit with your professional education, because in the clinics, they don't have access to YouTube and Google and Facebook and all that sort of stuff. Mm. But my phone, as most phones are now, 3G, and I use that if I'm that way inclined. So I do have access, I just don't have official access. And uh, all that's happening there, I think, is that we've learnt that our professional learning doesn't happen in this venue, but everything else we want to learn, languages, guitars, building a house, fixing a car, everything happens through this. That's a very odd disconnect that we're allowed to happen. So if you have any position of influence where you are in a clinical setting that is restricting access to the internet, then maybe lobby to have that changed at the same time, inter um, integrate a professional development activity that shows people how to access, analyze, critically appraise professional learning that is generally through this platform. So already I'm at odds with the realities in the clinics, restricting access to internet on computer, a desktop computer that's parked in a room over there or just not having the time to use this sort of stuff or not even having the incentive or motivation to use the internet <coughs> to augment my learning. But I'm also at odds with my boss, my employer, the person who pays my check because they don't integrate any of their platforms. We have a thing called LMS, otherwise known as Google. We have an Echo 360, <coughs> otherwise known as a lecture recording system. We have a thing called Collaborate, which is a web conferencing thing that costs us money versus Skype and Hangout we've already got here that the, most of the population know how to use, um, et cetera, et cetera. We have, a, we have buildings, the brick walls, and there's the community. We struggle to connect with the community and stuff. So my whole premise on my role is to dissolve boundaries between institutions, which I do find favour with that several people, including Les, in the health professions, but unfortunately, the only thing I can describe, the pull of the mighty Jupiter seems to be pulling us towards very mechanical, very clinical, very in institutional ways of practice, despite our better judgments. So, the anthropological introduction of YouTube, to YouTube. If you didn't already note that title, chuck it into Google when you get home, pour yourself a vino, and watch that from beginning to end. It's a moving video, I find it moving, and it really is a window into the cultural phenomenon that has been happening for the last 10 years <coughs> that our professions have allow, allowed us to, us to ignore. So with those premises, 4 minutes and 12 seconds, using platforms that are commonly used for everything else that we want to learn, just not our professional learning. What sort of obvious things? Mini lectures is one. If you are in that lecture tutorial format and you don't want to make a major change to your subject or you aren't in a position to make a major change to your subject, then 
think about giving mini lectures. I told myself that this one would go for four minutes and 12 seconds. I'm not too sure where we're up to, probably gone over, but I'm aiming for that. There's only two slides after this. If you've got a 60 minute time slot that you feel compelled to fill, then just coach yourself to make points in four minutes. Uh, if you're thinking it's a generational thing, one of the most successful people uh, in this idea that I've worked with was 70 some years old at University of Canberra, who just sat at his computer, typed in youtube.com, signed in, clicked upload, you're confronted with two things, upload a pre-existing video or simply record straight from your webcam. And he got close to the webcam and he gave his lectures aiming for four minutes, the best he got was six minutes, but he was able to take a 60 minute lecture and give the whole lot in six minutes. And his whole career, he was confronting this thing, why was I filling 60 minutes? I am able to actually say it in six minutes, I just never challenged myself. And then his students had a lot more free time. He, was, he himself had a lot more free time to meet students in his office and, and go over the points. The, the thing was recorded, you could play it four, five, six times. He accepted that Google is there, so he just focused on the keywords, what keywords are needed to put into Google to find your own way to the information. Short demos. Uh, I do this a lot in the links here. This is what I do actually to learn. So most, not so recently, but I was learning this new way of wood heating called rocket fire thermal mass heating. Uh, and I studied it online. I watched my own YouTube video, others' YouTube videos demonstrating how it was done. Then I would just do a stage, whip out the phone, set it to one minute, and in one minute explain what I was doing and upload it. And then you go to the next stage, one minute explain what I was doing and upload it. Now I was doing that for peer-to-peer -peer assessment. Those people who have already uploaded the videos would naturally find these videos and comment and correct my errors. This is not just consuming information off YouTube, this is actually entering into that space on a conversational basis. Now, you could take that cultural practice and obviously implement it in our formal settings. We do assessment. Maybe students could be recording videos in this way, one minute bursts, they've got to basically say the skill in short demos. But likewise, if you're giving demonstrations, you could give one minute demos. Now, why one minute? I'm sitting on a bus on a crappy 3G on the way out to Bendigo and I want to watch the video on my phone because I've got nothing else to do. One minute works. Put it on YouTube because it reliably works on the phone. If you want, for some reason, for it to be restricted access, YouTube has that feature. You don't know it because you're not encouraged to use YouTube in your professions. And that's the point I was making. If you make for mobile, everything else flows. So if you make with a mobile, and putting it onto a platform that serves to mobile, like YouTube, then everything else flows well. Bandwidth considerations, everything else, reasonably well. If you make on a desktop for screens at this resolution, then it's difficult to get it back to the mobile, get it back to those on poor bandwidth. So limit yourself, I suggest, down to that. You can even get editing software for mobiles. In fact, YouTube's got web-based editing, so you don't even need software anymore. You can just use it straight on the server. But if you limit yourself to a mobile phone in terms of video, then I think the rest will be ticked. That's all I've got to say about it. We've got a lot more time to talk. Hopefully this has sparked questions. You've got challenges. You even might have some food to throw at me. I don't know.